If I don't say something, am I posting like a wallflower? Or worse, a boy toy? Alright, so to protect this man's privacy and identity, let's just call him Mr. Australia. When I was about 21, 22 years old, I briefly dated an Australian man who was close to 30 years of senior. I was still a music student in a professional school. He was in a very top position of a local performing arts institution. We met in a dinner party thrown by a mutual friend at the time, but he already had heard of my name because I just won a top prize of an international competition. And somehow my name was passed to this man who had the power to make a lot of things happen, career-wise. So we met, we talked, we interacted at the dinner party. My first impression of this man was that he's very handsome, very tall, very composed, obviously extremely knowledgeable in arts and politics, very worldly, he's got lots of stories to tell, and at the same time he's very witty, funny, and humorous. I find it very sexy when a man who is totally in his element, totally in control, who knows what he's doing and does not have to try very hard. Now that is sexy and powerful. That's the very first thing I learned from this man. And I still remember he was wearing this cologne from Kenzo. It's very subtle, but it draws you in. Now, let me ask you this. How would you feel when a powerful man like this guy, who you happen to find sexy, gives you a ton of attention? I mean, I instantly became infatuated. He made me feel so special. After that particular party, we started seeing each other quite a lot, whenever we could. But now, several problems. Number one, I was still with my very first boyfriend who I made another video about. You can check that video out via the link below, but it was towards the very end of that particular relationship. Number two, I didn't know how to tell other people about him. I mean, I was already out and proud at the time, but I never had a situation where I became attracted to a much older man. I didn't have the maturity to deal with it. It was so new to me. So I was just slowly taking it all in. I knew I wanted to spend time with him. I felt like this man was showing me the world that I wasn't privy to. He was taking me to concerts and events. He had the power and connections to introduce me to professional working artists in the industry. He was sharing with me the insights and the knowledge and the real life experiences that I could never ever learn in school. I remember either on my 22nd or 23rd birthday, I don't quite remember, I woke up to a call from one of my idols in the performing arts industry who is an international superstar to say happy birthday to me. And this is all because of Mr. Australia. And on another occasion, we were spending some time in Sydney, Australia. He surprised me by flying me on a seaplane to a very exclusive restaurant that was only accessible by either boat or seaplane. It was a 10 course meal with a matching wine selection in a restaurant right by the water and the sea plane. I was completely overwhelmed and that's just two of many, many, many surprises that he had given me. He was always giving and paying. He was very sweet, caring, easygoing, smiley, attentive. I just enjoy being in the same space with him. I felt incredibly privileged, but on the flip side, I started to feel an enormous pressure and I started to have my internal struggle. 
Now remember, I was still a nobody. I was still in school. I was still trying to figure out my future. I was still trying to find my footing in the music industry. Was I getting ahead because I had a fast pass? Was I being unfair to others? And how could I return all his favors? What did I contribute to this unconventional relationship? When he took me out to social gatherings or dinner parties, he introduced me as his boyfriend. But these people are not in my peer group at all. What am I gonna say? Will I make myself look stupid if I say the wrong things? But if I don't say something, am I posting like a wallflower? Or worse, a boy toy? And looking ahead, how are we going to sustain this relationship? How about the future? Are we just dating or is it a long-term relationship? You see, I was incredibly self-conscious. I didn't know how to open up my concerns to my friends and family. And no one really was asking me how I was feeling about this. Mr. Australia certainly never asked. He just kept impressing me every time. My admiration and affection started to turn into anxiety, worries, and doubts. I didn't have the right mindset or skills to deal with the severe power imbalance. This man has the world, and I am still trying to find myself and my place in this world. But I liked him. I liked him a lot. That I was certain. But I just didn't know how to go on. At the end, I moved to New York City to start a new chapter, and of course, a whole new adventure began. We were still trying to hold on, kind of, for a little bit, but come on, I was in my 20s in New York City. I mean, things happen. And as immature as I was, I moved on without telling him. It was so immature. And he found out later and I caused him a great deal of pain. Well, I never said I was perfect, right? But years later, I owned it. I owned my immature action. I didn't know it was okay to have a serious heart-to-heart -heart talk about the state of a relationship. I didn't know it was okay to talk about how uncomfortable I felt. I didn't know it was okay to tell him I was ready to move on. So after that, we didn't communicate for a couple of years until much later I had a chance to see him back in Hong Kong and I apologized to his face. No but, no and, just an apology. He accepted it and now we are respectful and cordial. Obviously, he's not sending me Christmas card, but I know we still care about each other because we have been through so much together. And he will always be one of the most important and influential people in my coming to adulthood. And I'm forever grateful for everything he has given me. I sometimes wonder if the relationship would have been successful if I just had gone with the flow and stayed. I don't know. I think even if I had the maturity to, de to deal with the situation, we still wouldn't have lasted, but it would have ended in a much better way. At the time, I really wanted to explore the world on my own. And if you keep following my channel, you will find out that I wasn't really ready to settle down at that particular age. It certainly has left a big impact in my life, otherwise I wouldn't even talk about it. Apart from all the insights and incredible knowledge I learned from this man, the biggest lesson I learned from this relationship with a significant generation gap is how to address the fact that the severe power imbalance is making you uncomfortable and that you want him to pull back just a little and let you become your own person. Maybe then he would have treated you slightly differently. I don't know. But if you never say something, nothing will change. 
On the other hand, have a little faith if you want it to work. I never said it's not a good thing to date someone much, much, much older or younger. Maybe I was just thinking too much. But finding mutual ground is probably the key. And when it comes to a relationship of a significant age gap, this is probably the hardest part. Please let me know your thoughts, or if you're in a similar situation, or that you have made it work. Write me a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what I could have done better or differently. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to check me out across social media platforms for more fun content. The saga continues next time. Bye bye. Oh oh oh! By the way. I have reached the age where younger boys have started calling me daddy. Oh my goodness! I see you soon.